everyone and welcome back to my regular channel today we're going to cover the past two episodes of real housewives of potomac episode two and three titled allegation nation and stand in your truth now this season has started and they came guns a blazing the women aren't letting up also side note i just noticed they don't have taglines this season so that's different uh, i don't know maybe they're gonna come later maybe not we'll see so the episode opens up with everybody still at karen's event and they're still hashing out everything between mia and giselle robin says this <laughs> And she also said that the post came off as Mia inviting the energy of everyone's thinking. She's looking for attention. Now, Candace admits that a lot of people were thinking certain stuff, but there's a certain way that you ask. And while I was here for Robin calling some people out, I also agree with what Candace said. Just wait to hear what's really going on. Then we also seen Jacqueline, Mia's best friend, step in to have Mia's back. And she basically told everybody that Mia left the post open ended because Mia is still learning the details for herself. I was definitely here for Jacqueline having her friends back. Once the group disperses, Mia tells Karen that she's the chosen one and she's going to do the Lord's work when discussing her possible cancer situation. Katie and Sharice makes an appearance. Ashley and Candace are making strides towards their friendship. Wendy and the others notices it. Sharice tells Karen she wants to have a sit down with her while Giselle brings Katie over to Ray. Now if you watched the earlier seasons you'll know that Ray made comments about Katie being cute and that's like his crush. So you know this is typical Giselle trying to be messy. Katie then proceeds to grabs Ray's behind in a playful manner and I'm like girl keep your hands to yourself. Karen breaks everything up and she basically imitates Ray's laugh. <laughs> So after all this goes down, Karen gives us her speech and everybody is looking like, what is Karen even talking about? So this leads into them just partying, having a good time, and you know, typical Giselle. Karen stuff never makes any sense. Leave it to the grand dame. She's throwing a springtime party in a Mexican restaurant. Giselle could have sworn that springtime is everywhere. I didn't know it was for a certain region or so forth. We then get the montages of everybody and their families. Then it cuts to Karen getting her checkup at the doctor. So her boobs are healing well. And she also says she wants to show women that you can do something to lift you up. Basically do it for you, not for everyone else. And she also encourages women to not do it within their 20s. And we know that's because we hear all the time that you know you're gonna get your grown woman weight later on in life when you hit like your 30s you know i'm still waiting on my grown woman weight so we're gonna see how true that statement is then we see candace sister is living with her and basically she's waiting on our home to be built they also discuss how candace plans to get pregnant at the end of the year they also discuss the late hours with chris job and how she misses him working from home and just getting his undivided attention then we have ashley hanging out with her friend deborah they discuss their kids they also discuss where everything is with ashley Ashley and Michael. Now listen, I was here for Deborah asking all the questions everybody wants to know. Oh, he's still, he's still what, do you feel like he's trying to reel, reel you back in a little bit? What's that thing like? She's cheaper to keep her. Sometimes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And he's creepy, girl. How's something? How's it going? Oh, is he saying here or is he going to be looking for something else? No, so what are you going to do if something happens to you? How are you going to fix that? He mentioned if he's going to like date or anything. Oh. And Ashley basically says it feels like a long time coming and she will be ready for something new soon. And she also stated how TikTok has helped her cope with everything that she has going on. Then we get to Giselle and Robin having a sit down. Robin gives Giselle some merch for her daughters and she also wastes no time to tell Giselle she was wrong for bringing up her home situation and she also clarifies why Juan's name isn't on the mortgage. So his name's on the mortgage because our interest rate would have been higher because his credit has not fully recovered from the foreclosure. So it made sense just to leave them off. So it's not like this is my house and you live in it. That's not what it is. Giselle says she effed up and that that's not her business to tell. Robin said, well, of course it's not. You wouldn't want me telling your business. And Giselle was like, oh, please, let's not. So Giselle, what are you hiding? She also told Giselle her delivery to Mia was terrible. And I have to agree with Robin here. It definitely was. Giselle had to ask Robin if she should apologize. And I was sitting there and I was like, girl, you know you should. You know you're in the wrong. Robin also tells Giselle that her and Ashley were shopping for her home. And she said Ashley told her she got a DM with Chris Bassett. We, we gotta deal with semantics here, right? Let's she tells her he's the general manager at the rooftop and Ashley reel it in a bit he was responding to your story he did not DM you Giselle he did not slide into her DM so please do not say that that gives the wrong context Giselle also took this upon herself to bring up her encounter with Chris from like months ago at the reunion and Robin's face was all of our faces Giselle you're reaching and Giselle couldn't even tell us what exactly he said other than he was talking about something about Candace so Giselle please stop 
We also get Mia, G, and Jacqueline having lunch, and we learn that Mia and Jacqueline have been best friends since they were like 15. Rarely do you keep friends from like college. So the fact that you still have your friend from high school, y'all gotta work this out. It's crazy. Mia also calls Jacqueline the other wife, you know, just without the sex part within their marriage. And she then made a comment, well, you know, well, not with G. So I was like, so y'all shared before? Got it. We also learned that Mia's is still going through the testing and this led into them discussing what happened at the event. Mia reads what Karen has said before she got to the party and Karen warned her of what was going on before she walked in and Mia took it. Translation, Mia, we've been talking about you all week and I want you to know before you walk in here. Notice. Her and Jacqueline said Karen had many opportunities to tell her, especially because they live down the street from each other. Now during the scene, correct me if I'm wrong, I could have sworn that she already warned her in episode one when she went to her house to visit and maybe she was just reiterating it. I don't know, but basically Jacqueline feels like Karen was just trying to cover for herself. Then we have Ashley and Candace meeting up. They had putt-putt. They talked about the Grammys. Ashley tells her everything she told Robin and she mentioned she pulled her to the side because she knows Candace prefers to have these conversations outside of a group. So Candace tells her that he's the general manager there and he's rebranding the W. Ashley didn't know that Chris was the general manager at View. I can see why she might think that it's weird that he's DMing her at 2 a.m. I can see that. I'm choosing to believe that it was not shady. I'm going to give her one benefit of the doubt token. The conversation ends well, but I can't help but feel like Robin already told you this, so why you didn't just take her word for it? I do understand you telling her what happened though. Then we get to Ashley and her dance class. So Karen couldn't make it because she had a fever. Giselle made it and she tries to grill Ashley again about the divorce situation and it's like, girl, she was given too much energy other than just asking questions. She says she, she doesn't play when it comes to divorce, but you play around with other people's marriages which could easily lead to divorce. So which one is it, Giselle? Everybody else eventually makes it and they begin the routines. They're having a good time. And as you can tell, Robin isn't the best dancer out of the group. But after the routines, are over we get Candace, Robin, and Giselle and they're talking while everybody else walk out. So while everybody is out there Sharice asks Ashley when they're getting a the divorce statement and Ashley basically says it'll be after the loan is approved because you know her loan kind of rides on them still being married. Candace, Robin, and Giselle. They discuss Candace freezing her eggs. Robin leaves and Giselle decides to tell Candace what she told Robin. There was a situation in which Chris made me feel completely uncomfortable and I feel like at this point I should tell you what happened. So we were at the reunion. We're in the hallway, we're talking, and he was like, hey, can I talk to you in your room? And so I was like, cool, mm -hmm. because my brain's in my room, no big deal. Like, come on, yeah. I get to my room, my brain is gone. And I immediately felt like I don't want to get in this room. So did he do something? Did he not say something? No. Right. He didn't. She still couldn't recall what Chris really said. So again, Giselle, why is this being brought up months later? And yes, some things can happen and you know, you bring it up when you can, da 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 da. But it just gave, let me ride off the coattails of what Ashley said and try to make this a thing. That's just how it felt when I was watching it. Giselle also tells Candace, you can't diminish how I felt, which is true or so forth. But I was also here when Candace said, coat over a puddle for you to walk over. I don't know who would cook you a meal, but I'm just telling you, what, is, what are we doing? What is this? Candace gets up to leave and she lets them know y'all are not about to play with my marriage and this leads into episode three. Episode three opens up with Candace still talking to production because she doesn't like that they are targeting her husband. The producer Eric lets her know that he has no control of what others say or do and I will say it is super weird how every year Giselle does have something to say or has a rumor when it pertains to somebody else's husband. Giselle goes to meet the others and they're all trying to figure out what is wrong with Candace and Giselle acts like she has no clue. With Candace is eventually saying I'm fine she storms out and we get this confession not today Satan not today neck not today ankles we don't have it Wendy tells the others that she is planning to open her restaurant with Peter and Ashley asks will her and Eddie's relationship suffer because Ashley would know more about that as we did see in earlier seasons. Their former restaurant caused a lot of problems within her and Michael's marriage but Wendy is very adamant that her and Eddie will be fine. Giselle and Mia decide to go to the side to have their conversation while the others continue to talk which does eventually shift to talk about Mia. Mia and Giselle hash out their issues very quickly with Mia saying that she wasn't expecting Giselle to come at her that 
that way, but she was expecting it from Wendy. And for some reason, in the back of my mind, I was sitting there watching it like, are we watching the same show? Giselle does this to everybody. The group is still talking about Mia's post while Mia and Giselle are hashing things out. And Wendy feels like the main problem is the way that they came at Mia. Robin feels like, why would you make a comment about what we're saying when you feel the same exact way with Wendy saying that their energy towards Mia was not warranted. The argument escalates and honestly, I feel like Robin was doing the most. And just like Cherie said, there's underlying tension there. So clearly, Robin, you're still mad about what happened last year. Wendy also gets caught up at the end of the scene with the producer saying that no one believes Mia anyways, and she calls her a liar. I just wanna say that Robin, Wendy was trying to figure out what exactly was said and what is going on. She wasn't coming at you disrespectfully in that other scene. And Wendy's main point here is that they came at Mia. So no matter how everyone may feel about Mia's statement, whether you believe it or not, there's better ways to to ask or so forth. But Wendy, you should have left it there and never said, stand in your truth. I never called her a liar because now the shift is gonna be on Nix. Um, I'm okay. I probably, outside of me and Karen, I'm probably the only one that's trying to give her a chance. But she's lying, so who cares? Giselle and Mia join the group towards the end of the argument. Ashley asks Mia how she's doing and Mia lets them know that they have ruled out cancer. She still has to go through the process of removing the lumps. Robin then invites everyone and their kids to a fun day, except for Wendy. Wendy says, that Robin has a character flaw because she's excluding her kids and honestly in the real world no one is going to invite you to anything especially if y'all don't get along so I DK why Wendy expected that but I will say Robin you're just being flat out rude and petty for trying to exclude her and her family if you're going to exclude them invite the people separately then we see Ray and Karen going for a manicure type of date Karen asks if he's insecure with the changes that she's made recently but he's adamant that he's not and he says that he knows she has eye candy and he's okay with eye candy as long as that is only what eye candy. Then we get another scene where it's Ashley and her brother looking for her a new home. There's this gorgeous five bedroom home we get to see. Production asks Ashley a series of questions like, do they plan to make a cash offer? And how she felt about learning from the realtor, the, you know, the same realtor that her and Michael have used for years, that it really didn't matter if they knew they were getting a divorce or not. Something that Michael said was important for them to not no, so of course Ashley made excuses about the cash offer situation and when it pertains to people knowing about their divorce She said this when I think about that I get upset about it, but man, I just I can't let it bog me down This is the confirmation for everything her, her uncle said in the earlier episode if he's lying about this He can easily be lying about anything else So Ashley get a lawyer and protect yourself Then we are introduced to Robin and Juan's new home and it is gorgeous by the way Her and Juan are sorting out everything and they begin to discuss the wedding Her mom sending pictures of their first wedding and then Robin brings up the prenup Juan basically doesn't mind having a prenup But he did want to know why she's asking for one now she brings brings up their past and the divorce and he immediately shuts everything down. Juan basically just said, stop bringing up old stuff. In the next scene, Wendy meets with her dermatologist. Her hair has been thinning since she had her daughter and I believe that was like, what, two years ago or something like that? Wendy explains that she's under a lot of stress and we see her talk about how she saw her mom stress a lot. And honestly, girl, if it's bringing you too much stress, let it go. We also see her doctor explain what stress can do to your hair and body. What stress does is it literally pulls nutrients away from your follicle. Because in times of stress, hair is not as priority for the body. So we will see how Wendy is going to handle the stress moving forward. And we also learned that one of the side effects for the medicine that she's prescribing is facial hair. And we later see Mia and Robin have a sit down. Robin basically wants to make sure her and Mia are still cool after everything that happened at Karen's party. And Mia basically says, yeah, we're cool. Then they discuss the state of Mia's health. And Mia reiterates that she is cancer free, but she's still getting the biopsy with Robin. Robin basically grilling her on every little tiny detail. Quickly turns to Robin telling Mia about the Giselle and Ashley and Candace situation. Mia reveals that at Karen's party, Chris was basically staring at her. And production came through with the clips proving that he wasn't even looking in her direction like at all. So it's clear she was just basically trying to get in on the action. And I'm not gonna lie, I was rolling my eyes during this scene. So Mia, 
I'ma say it like I said about the others, stop it. Stop pushing the narrative. At least Giselle has some kind of reasoning that makes half an ounce of sense. Like, I don't even know if that's really a word or a saying, but y'all get what I'm saying. It makes a little bit of sense with how she felt, but the other half is thrown out because she said, you know, we'll get into that a little later. But back to my main point, Mia, this is why everybody thinks you have a little lying problem. Giselle meets with Karen at her home, and then we see Chris and Candace having lunch. So while Chris and Candace are talking, they discuss the IVF and how it's very difficult. We also seen in the earlier episode that Candace goes through the process. The doctor walks her through everything, but it's basically did not take. So Candace is a little stressed out and she's worried. When Robin walks up, Chris is a little hesitant and Robin makes it known that she doesn't want him to treat her any different. She also explains that Ashley and Giselle's situation and how she pretty much doesn't align with their statements and how it is taken out of context. We also see Giselle and Karen have their conversation as well as Candace, Chris, and Robin, and they're basically having similar conversations. This is what I'm getting from the story so far. Both Chris and Giselle say that nothing happened and he left right away. Chris said that he left the door open so there wouldn't be any rumors, and Giselle said she asked him to see if production needed her or something along that line just to basically get him out of her room. Giselle admits that he didn't do anything to her, but she felt uncomfortable with him being there. Chris said he always goes out of his way to make sure he is nice to the women and that he doesn't cross any lines. He also acknowledged that in some way he may have made her feel uncomfortable, but he's not sure how. And he also states that Giselle is always bringing up his penis in different conversations. Candace also states that if she was uncomfortable, then why was she not uncomfortable with him at Karen's party? Karen said that he basically owes Giselle an apology but once she heard the full story Karen is trying to understand how did they even get to this place because she said nothing even happened. Karen also said that Candace may feel a way because of how Giselle brought the information to the group with Giselle revealing that she didn't bring it up to the group Robin did. So it's believed that there's going to be some cracks within their friendship but we know they won't have a real issue with each other. We also saw Karen bring up a situation about one of the husbands making her feel uncomfortable like three years or three seasons ago but she wouldn't stay who it was. These two episodes were jam-packed with a lot of information and I can say that so far there hasn't been a dull moment and it's very hard to keep the video very short because there's so much information given. But I will say honestly we will have to see the Giselle and Chris thing just play out. But honestly we have seen Giselle target husband. So yes, don't be in a room with a married man by yourself if you don't you know, want anything to happen or you don't want anyone to say that anything has happened but within her conversation she has said each time nothing happened and based on footage it looks like she doesn't have a problem with being around him especially when we seen them at Karen's party they had multiple conversations so between the Mia Ashley and Giselle thing everything is coming off as a reach a bit and that's mainly because of the footage and knowledge of the insta stories and how that kind of works so it's kind of not on the majority side right now I will say yes if you feel uncomfortable you felt uncomfortable but I'm just trying to understand Giselle where did you get the uncomfortable feeling from that is episode two and three i hope you all enjoyed it and i will definitely see y'all soon for the next videos and be on the lookout because married to medicines reunions are going on and i will be coming with a recap for those and you know we're getting into november so you know there are going to be some more award shows coming up so i will have those fashion reviews i'll see y'all next time